Hey, as you watch Joey Bosa on video right now, what is what just stands out as big difference between him at this point this year and this point last year? I think it's the big picture. It's the discipline, the the things that uh, that he does that you know don't come up on the stat sheet. Yeah. You know, everybody looks for the sacks and the tackles for loss and those kinds of things, but to see the disruption he he does for our defense, uh, doing the little things, taking on blocks, defeating blocks, uh, spilling the ball, um, that's something that I think has really really increased his game. Did you? Did you know he had that in him to be that kind of player, that selfless? Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of these prima donna you know, defensive ends come in, they want sacks, et cetera, and stuff. You know, you're yeah, no, it, it's it's hard. I mean, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, the world today, I mean, the media, everybody, I mean, that's all they talk about. They're, they're going to evaluate everything, and, and they evaluate using the stats. And, you know, when you really break it down, you look deep down inside it, you know, He's the example to what you want everybody to do, to not worry about the, the, the selfish things, you know, not not harp on the stats, but the, the little things that matter. And um, the great thing about it is you, you've seen the maturity in him and you've seen that uh, really kind of permeate throughout the entire team. Could he be an outstanding three technique in college football if you wanted, if, he, if you just wanted to put him there? He could be an outstanding three technique. He could be an outstanding end. He could be an outstanding nose guard. Yeah. I'm not sure he would be an outstanding middle linebacker. I mean. He can do it all. Um, would he be a great three technique? Definitely. You know, obviously there's some there's some different things, but yeah. um, I wouldn't overcomplicate it. I would say he can meet defeat blocks and he can get off of the get off the ball really well. So um, he could play anywhere, probably across that line. Last season, towards the end of the year, defense obviously rose to the occasion in the postseason. Do you kind of see that same trajectory with this this unit right now? Well, that's where we like to go. I mean, we talk about it from from the time a spring ball started to the time fall camp started. That ultimately you got to play your best ball at the end of the year, uh, and that's what November is all about. So, um, everything that we had done in the previously and, and what we worked to is, hey, what we got to do is put our best foot forward, and we got to continue to be consistent in what we're doing and. And make sure that we're going to play our best ball at the end of the year. You know, some guys that have played out there that in the wind tunnel there at Memorial Stadium. It seems like it's usually tough for the Buckeyes when they go out there. Have you talked to them much about that, about how things can get kind of tricky out there at Illinois? I haven't talked to them a lot yet. I mean, obviously, it's a Monday, um, so we're con you know we're still continuing to do our stuff as we get them back in here tomorrow. That that'll be obviously something we continue to talk about. But um, they most of these guys have played over there, uh, so a lot of them have. So they'll, they'll know they'll know what they're walking into and. and Ultimately, I don't know that it affects us in the wind tunnel as much as it might affect the offense. So right. um, it can be a good thing defensively at times. What do you think about that well. place, though? That, that, I mean, do you, do you have good memories of that place or bad memory? I mean, it just seems like weird <laughs> stuff sometimes happens over there. I mean, how far do you want to go back? There's, yeah. You know, if you really <laughs> dive, days, dive deep into this mind, yeah. there's, there's a lot of good and bad. Unfortunately, as a coach, sometimes you remember the, the bad ones too often. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's some really good ones too. So, I mean, every place you go is going to pose a new challenge. Every team you step up against, you know that you're going to get their best shot um, because of the block going on your chest. How much better were they? Obviously, they're playing Purdue last week. How much better were they on offense with Ferguson back in the game, though? They're running back. Uh, he does seem to bring a little pep to it. No, he definitely brings some energy to the offense. I think he is a dynamic guy. Um, but them having the ability to have two tailbacks and, and use them both at the same time, I think brings a lot of versatility to the offense. I mean, look at our offense. The more the more uh, athletes you put out there, the more weapons you got. Um, defenses have to account for that. So mm -hmm. he definitely brings some energy back, and I think he, he brings some weapons back to their offense. Luke, when you guys signed Vonzell a couple of years ago, it seemed like a huge celebration for you guys to land him then. What was it about him that had you guys so excited and now, I mean, he's certainly been a huge playmaker for you guys down the road. Well, I mean, again, unfortunately, I wouldn't, since he's standing right over there, the, the <laughs> hype the hype is what everybody gets excited about. I yep. mean, did you see a lot of things on film? Definitely. You saw a playmaker on film. You saw a guy that played wide out, could take the ball the distance. You know, you saw picks, interceptions, great ball skills, um, all those things you saw on film. But again, it's high school film, mm -hmm. and, and what do you really get when you get him there? You don't. You have a good, you think you have a great idea, but the reality is, it's what they develop into. And I, the greatest thing I can tell you is, is he's a pro. He, he he studies the game, he works the game, he practices the game, um, and it shows on on Saturdays. Has he exceeded what you guys thought then? I mean, I know that it's the development process is ongoing, but I don't know if he's exceeded. I mean, we had high expectations, obviously as high as he was considered, but uh, the reality is, the the little things that he does, he's exceeded. Um, what he's done in the first two years, I can assure you that. And that's not always noticed on Saturdays, but the way he practices, the way he studies, um, the example he gives to the younger guys and the other guys on the defense, um, 
it defines what our my definition of leadership is and make others around him better. And Luke, he really had to earn his stripes. Coach Ash has talked about this, how he, you know, Vaughn didn't even start the opener last year. He had such a great season last year, but he really had to, had to earn his way. He wasn't just given anything. Can, can you talk about maybe what's the difference with him? That's usually the best way. You know, things that are that are earned sometimes mean a little bit more and makes you have to fight for them a little bit more. So um, that's the way you'd like to have it. The reality is sometimes that's not the way it happens. There's a lot of guys that you know fall in a position where they need you right now. but. Uh, He's done a great job. That's the only thing I can say is, is he continues to do a great job um, and he continues to be a great example to everybody around him. Going back to Joey, Coach Meyer called him one of the most disruptive players, or the most disruptive player he's coached. Where is he on that list for you, not only players you coach with, but players you've played with? It's, it's I mean, obviously at, at the moment, he's as disruptive as I can remember. Um, you know, to really, once it's all said and done and you kind of look back, you can probably get a little bit better uh, grasp on it, but the reality is he, he's incredibly disruptive. The ability for him to move around, like we said, from end to three technique, all different areas, all different spots, I think causes more disruption even even than we than we know. Do you still keep in touch with Mike Vrabel, and how much do you guys still? I'm sure you keep in touch. How often do you guys talk? He's not talking a whole lot, so as <laughs> <laughs> as often as we used to, not quite as much uh, text messages. But uh, you know, you get in the season, we're all we're all grinders and. Um, you don't get a whole lot of free time. They had a buy this week, and he still didn't answer his phone. So I harass him for that. As, as somebody who um, prefers criticism to praise and is never satisfied, um, how would you kind of judge where this defense is right now? We got to finish, you know. And, and you know, you can say whatever you want to say, and then ultimately you're going to be remembered on how you play in November. And I think we've said that from the start of fall camp. We said that last year in spring. Um, the little base fundamental things are going to show up when it really gets down to it in November. When you say finish, I mean, you also refer to the fourth quarter. Because obviously played lights out for three quarters and didn't finish particularly yeah. great against them. And that's exactly what we got to be able to do. And that's a sign of maturity and that's a sign of leadership. But do you think all the pieces are in place for you to be that team, that defense? We can be. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brief, right? You said yeah. be brief. I didn't say be brief. Exactly. He said be brief.